Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel and also do go to the playlist section for the earlier videos which are there, you can find it as per your convenience. Now in today's session on regional planning, we are talking about approaches to regional planning, various types of approaches, its classification and various other points in this video. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about these various approaches in regional planning. But before we go into approaches directly, one thing to understand here is that this is not new. Remember regional plans and policies have been carried out since the beginning of civilized settlement itself. In last 10,000 years, we have been looking into various aspects of planning and policies and the concept of region, not directly, but at least indirectly applied in various forms of planning and policy making. Now, regional planning in simple way can be defined as the integrated management of economic, social, physical resources of a spatially bounded area. A spatially bounded area means it has to have a boundary which is clear cut delimited. Right. So if you have not watched the videos on regional planning of the earlier lectures, you can go to the playlist and watch it. We have discussed all these points there. Now, what is important to consider here is that in modern era, in today's world, regional plans have been promulgated at subnational, multi-jurisdictional areas such as metropolitan areas as well. And with this comes the urban development plans, the rural development plans and several other plans. So what we observe here is that, for example, Greater London, London, Paris, New York, Chicago all have benefited from these efforts of regional planning and remember especially after World War II. So what happened? After World War II, the city restructuring, the urban development planning, the suburbia development and mass scale industrialization and post World War industrial cities started to develop across the world. That's where these regional planning approaches were defined and various approaches came to play different roles in different countries depending upon also the modes of production. Right. So what we observe here that in an increasing interdependent world, what is important? It is faced with environmental degradation already that we know and environmental degradation is a big hurdle in economic development. And remember, there is social inequality that is rising day by day. So approaches to regional planning is very important to consider because it gives us the viewpoint of integrated regional resource management through different approaches of planning. That's why we say that approaches to regional planning matter the most. It is not just simply the plan, but how do we plan is what is the matter right now. So let's understand the classification of these approaches to regional planning. So the broad framework is geographical approach, economic approach, sociological approach and holistic approach. These are the four broad approaches of regional planning. When I say broad approaches, it means there will be several sub approaches within one approach, right? So for example, in geographical approach, you'll find locational analysis, watershed based plan, area based planning, aerial differentiation that we studied in perspectives in human geography comes to play a role importantly here. And also the uniqueness of the area, the homogeneity principles in which an area is physically delimited, their geographical approach becomes very important in regional plan. Then economic approach, remember, economic development is considered parallel to development these days and economic development essentially needs to be approached in terms of flow of goods and services, service area, special economic zones and several others that we develop. Then come to sociological approach and it's about society, social welfare, social well-being and it has to be non-discriminatory in nature. It means one class of society should not be discriminated against the other class. 
right so social welfare and also well-being is considered in this approach then what we observe is the holistic approach which is an integrated approach which is also called equilibrium approach it means the balance has to be maintained rather than imbalances which are there around the world so here the balanced approach or holistic approach is being taken so now let's understand one by one all these broad approaches which have been elaborated into further subtypes of these approaches to regional planning so the first one is the very important approach called river basin approach the word itself tells us river being very important on land surface area so river provide a wide range of services and remember services such as fisheries energy production food attenuation spiritual and cultural services recreational services housing support system and several others provided by river it's important source of water on the surface so river basin approach is one of the very common approach of the regional planning which is there in terms of geographical approach or physical approach many times formally a river valley is delineated as well so we observe here what it was first attempted in 1933 in united states tennessee valley authority tva right and american tennessee valley authority pioneered a paradigm shift and initiated this step to improve human welfare considering this river basin approach right and in india what we did in 1948 was damodar valley authority dvc if you remember this dvc power map what was there a series of several dams being created thermal power plants being created so maithan dam panchit dam tilaiya dam then we have btps ctps dtps and mtps then konar panchit tilaiya maithan dams all of you all of these dams if you observe here carefully led to the channelizing of water for multiple purpose for hydropower generation for electricity and also for irrigation purposes and remember damodar river was called sorrow of bengal before this which actually went into the boom of the regional development so this is on the basis of river basin approach so in simple ways what is the main goal of river basin approach the main goal is to coordinate use of shared basins of multiple users right multiple basins would be there and multiple states may have their jurisdiction over it or interstate or international also water sharing can be done then to avoid environmental degradation is very important aspect of it to promote sustainable development definitely and remember integrative land and water management systems that's why it is very important aspect and damodar valley corporation or tennessee valley authority is the prime example right to promote integrated optimal development of natural resources agricultural development infrastructural development all these are the prime goals of river basin approach of regional development then what we observe is to decentralize planning and management make it adaptive right so this is also important then to attract development in a given area and pull lot of industries lot of developmental activities in the area and also the second approach alongside this is the metropolitan planning approach which is very common in today's world the cities the urban infrastructure the metropolitan cities became really important so metropolitan planning as a regional planning approach deals with land use planning physical land use that we say social and economic development of metropolitan areas municipality and neighborhoods now remember metropolitan cities serve several functions if you can observe here right right from the smart house to smart city to infrastructure development for education health and other services multi utility services are there so metropolitan region development is very important because people from all walks of life come for lot of services to these metropolitan in areas or metropolitan region so if you observe carefully remember city as a center when it developed what happens there is a territorial exchange in the centers and remember over time what happens resources from all around concentrates into the city so what happens because of this there is lot of developmental activity in the city center but remember with this also there is a problem in the outside what is the problem there is an imbalance between cities and villages and for this imbalance 
we need to be good in terms of planning. So what we need to do is through our planning, we need to reduce this imbalance between the towns and villages, metropolitan city and the hinterland areas. We need to reduce it. So adjacent rural area must be included in metropolitan planning approach, not just the city region. That's very important to consider in this approach. Then if you go ahead further, we have a town and country planning approach. Remember, we have a town and country planning authority. It talks about the town centric as well as the rural enclaves planning together in terms of coordinated manner to reduce the imbalances of urbanization very important model right so this approach in a country like india developmental plans are limited even in towns and due to the time taken to reach the benefits at the village level there is always a urban rural divide there is not an urban rural continuum so this divide is very common and to lessen this divide to reduce the disparities we need a town and country planning coordinated approach in regional planning right so for example in developed countries the city centric influence is more due to which differences between cities and villages is very less and there is a continuum so if you go from a core city to a suburb you will have those services like health services educational services and several other services which are continually which are available in continuity. That's what important is. Now, area development approach. This is to a specific area requirement. So as you can see, we have several area program in India, drought prone area, flood prone area program, hill area developmental programs, tribal area development programs. It means it is area specific planning. The problems of the area are considered while making the policies and the regional plans for development. Then what we have is the fifth and that is problematic area approach. Here, area approach in terms of specific problems is very important. So if you observe, due to lack of resources in many places around the world, we'll find that there is a disparity and some places are left behind in the race of development. So due to various social, political, historical, economic reasons it may be. And for example, we have in India, Dandakaranya region in Chhattisgarh, Sonbhadra in Uttar Pradesh, Northeastern states in India. So we have to have a specific area programs for these areas in terms of their specific problems. So problematic area approach is one approach in regional planning as well. Then what we have is rural development approach. Remember integrated rural development program, IRDP programs we have right where you have the housing facilities in rural areas toilet facilities in rural areas swaksha bharat abhiyan that we have run through right so these are some important things where drinking water schools healthcare facilities have to be given to rural areas then similarly urban area development program as we know the urban civic amenities and infrastructures provision right so that is also important in urban development approach and then what we have is the economic regionalization approach if you remember this approach of the world map what is here all these economic units nafta then you have mercosur south asian association for regional cooperation asean nations pacific islands forum gcc right several such that commonwealth of independent states cis then you have european union what are these these are basically talking about economic blocks in the world and that's where economic regionalization approach comes to the picture it's basically talking about that development is concentrated in a particular group in a particular cluster if you scale it down to a city or a urban area what happens city centers have concentrations of all the development in terms of economy right and rural areas often don't have migration from rural to urban is very common in the initial phases of development isn't it so what we observe here is in economic regionalization approach it's very important to understand the economic needs of the location of the area of the states and then allocation of resources accordingly so allocative regional planning when we say distributive and indicative regional planning when we say it comes to economic regionalization approach which is very important so in this there is a coordination in planning process in the state of order from minimum level that's very important so what you observe further that many scholars like professor rp mishra Professor K. V. Sundaram, Professor L. S. Bhatt and several other scholars have conceptualized this economic regionalization approach in our country on various categories of goods and services and also the area of services that till what extent the services are being providing delineation of these particular regions for different planning purposes and this is how this multi-level regionalization on the basis of economy and goods and services flows and several others have been done at India level as well. Right? So we talk about 
about the last kind of approaches which are comparative approaches. For example, you will see two approaches being compared here. Total regional plan versus selective approach. Now what is this? Remember, approach to regional planning can be either total in nature, totalitarian, complete area and considering one policy for the whole or a selective regional planning approach, right? So both these approaches will depend upon what is our idea of investment. So mostly it is economic investment driven approaches of economic planning in a region where we talk about the total plan of the region or a single centric approach. In the beginning in India, we talked about this selective approach where mineral were there we planted our iron and steel cities there that was a selective planning so these are two approaches in comparison then what we have is bottoms up approach and top down approach this is a perspective approach are we coming from poor in the first priority to the rich in the last in the tier or are we going the other way around so are we coming from local to the central that is basically bottoms up approach and are we going the other way around where development planned by experts from the top like for example planning commission or niti ayo makes a plan for the rural local countryside so that is a top to down approach so is it bottoms up approach or top to down approach what are we going to choose according to our implementation of the policies our goals for future development for sustainable development so that is what matters in this comparative approaches so now when we have learned about the various aspects of approaches of regional planning in this video we'll be talking more about other aspects such as theories of regional development and several other topics. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, share the videos and don't forget to press the like button if you haven't already. So all the best wishes. See you in next video.